My guest today is Matt Groves. Matt, how are you today? I'm great, David. Thanks for having me on the show again. Oh, thanks for coming back. It's good to see you. I don't remember the last time I saw your face, but I just looked up and realized the last time you've been on my show was almost exactly five years ago. Wow. Five years ago. Imagine what the world was like five years ago. You know, we used to go outside. Yeah. <laughs> we used to see people in person. <laughs> it was a different world. It was in Chicago, I believe, right? It was in Chicago. Uh, you just spoken to the user group meeting, and we were hanging out in the lobby. And uh, you would, I think you were recently, you had recently joined Couchbase, right? I think that's true. I've been at Couchbase for, I think, almost six years. So that sounds Oh, so right. you were probably less than a year that you'd been yeah. there. And, um, and a lot has evolved. Your career has evolved. Couchbase has evolved. In fact, that's I just right. saw that Couchbase version 7 is out. That's right. Couchbase um, version 7 was just uh, released, uh, generally available. It's been in beta for a while, mm -hmm. uh, public open beta, but uh, we had a full release here a few weeks back. So I, we talked about this last time, but uh, give us uh, the elevator pitch for those that aren't familiar with Couchbase. What is it? Yeah, Couchbase is a, a NoSQL database. It's a document database. Uh, you store data as JSON. And uh, it's designed to be scalable. So uh, your databases are clustered. It's a collection of multiple machines that join together over a network uh, so you can add additional resources just by scaling out horizontally. Uh, Couchbase is unique among document databases in a, a number of ways. One of them is it has a built-in memory first architecture so caching is built right in. There's no need to uh, bolt on any sort of other caching technologies. And the second thing which is my favorite thing about Couchbase is why I came there in the first place is it has a full SQL query language. So a NoSQL database with a full SQL query language with joins and merge and CTEs and everything you'd expect from SQL. It's all there in a NoSQL database. Sounds like a paradox. Uh, SQL you know, it's, language it's, and NoSQL database. It's sometimes tough to uh, convey that. Um, there are a lot of NoSQL databases out there that have a SQL-like language that kind of looks like SQL, but right. it's not. But Couchbase is a full ANSI SQL you know, everything you'd expect uh, with the relational database, query language, you'd ha you have in, in Couchbase. Very cool. Uh, well, tell me about version 7. What's new and cool that just came out? Yeah, so version 7 is certainly one of our biggest releases ever, and there's a lot of great features in there. And uh, some, of, some of the features, I think, are going to really appeal to uh, developers who are uh, still, still using relational databases or still stuck with relational databases, depending on how you look at it. And a number of features in there to kind of help ease the transition, I think. Um, Couchbase has always been, as I said, you know, SQL for a NoSQL database, something of a uh, best of both worlds database, I think. And, and these features just add to that. So the first one, the biggest one that you'll see if you go to our website, as you've already done, I think, with your research. Um, scopes and collections. It's something uh, that Couchbase has added. It's two different levels of organization within a database. So previously, Couchbase just had a big bucket full of documents, a little piece mm -hmm. of JSON, and that's, and that's what it was. We've added these things called scopes and collections, um, where you can organize your data a little bit further. So if you're familiar with the relational world, a collection would kind of be analogous to a table. Mm -hmm. where it's just a, you have a name of it and you put documents in there that are all the same type. It's different than a table in that you don't have to define uh, a schema up front still. You don't have to say, these are the fields that I want in this collection, and, that's, and that has to be the case. It, it can still right. have flexibility there. And then scopes is, a ne is the next level up. So scopes can contain collections, uh, and it's just another level of organization. Uh, and the idea with scopes is to support use cases like uh, microservices, where you want to split your data access up through different, uh, different services. Maybe you have a people service for user profiles, and you have a, a payroll service for you know, paychecks or something like that. Uh, and you can certainly define a, a security, permissions, authentication, and all these different levels of uh, scopes and collections. And for the relational world, if, you're, if you've are if you used schemas before, so like SQL Server, for instance, you have uh, schemas that can contain tables. Mm -hmm. The same idea with scopes. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people just use DBO for schema in, uh, in SQL Server. Uh, so, you know, 
Uh, you may not need that level of uh, organization, but it is there if you need it for, like I said, microservices and a multi-tenancy is another good use case for that. If you ha want to have the same kind of data structure for different customers, you can right. use that scopes to, to find that. So those are the, the two big features and, and uh, a lot of the other new features in Couchbase 7 kind of flow out of scopes and collections. So that's, that's one. Uh, yeah. The second one. I, when you said that, oh, I actually, my current project, we're working with Cosmos DB, uh, which mm -hmm. is another NoSQL database, and it has a concept of uh, containership, which is sort of that same hierarchy. It's still NoSQL. It's still, you don't define it, predefine anything, but if you want to organize it, and I always thought of it more as like folders in a, yeah. on a file system more than tables in a database. Right, right. Well, you know, that, that makes sense too, I think. It's just that in the database world, people often think in terms of tables and scopes and, or yeah. tables uh, and uh, schemas. So, uh, But yeah, uh, folder structure makes sense as well. You'd have a basically two levels of folders down to the individual files. Think of it like mm. that. All right, please go on. Yeah, so the other thing, the second thing uh, that's uh, Couchbase 7, and this has been... Uh, Something that earlier pre versions of Couchbase have dabbled in a little bit, and certainly in, in uh, previews and betas, but uh, acid transactions is, mm -hmm. are now available on Couchbase. And this is something that, you know, if, if people have looked at NoSQL in the past and they discovered that you, ca you can't do an acid transaction, something that I think turns people off that are just used to, uh, you know, having transactions in place as, as kind of a safety net for, for dealing with multiple pieces of data. So that's now available in Couchbase, which is... You know, define, it's, define it's, transactions, as a transaction. Yeah, transactions. So when you ever have a, a begin, commit, rollback type situation, if you have multiple data operations that are touching multiple pieces of data, uh, or maybe they call it to a third-party service, for instance, you want to make sure that uh, everything happens or none of it happens. So you have data consistency there. So if I want to, let's say, uh, update uh, a bank account, I want to transfer money. If I, I don't want to... Uh, you know, I want to subtract money from one and add money to the other. I don't want that to fail halfway, and I've just removed money and it's it's gone forever. Or I've added money and it just comes from nowhere, right? So you want to have a consistency where both those things happen or neither of them happen. So right. that's now available in Couchbase, which is quite remarkable considering that it's a distributed database. So it's multiple machines uh, across the network. So those transactions have to be coordinated across, you know, potentially dozens or hundreds of machines. Um, and so they've done some great work at Couchbase to uh, implement that um, from, uh, from Couchbase clients. So if you're using SDK for .NET or Java or whatever. And uh, they've also added uh, be the begin commit rollback syntax to that SQL query language. It's called Nickel in Couchbase, N1QL. So if you're writing SQL, you can do the same thing. You can say begin transaction, update, 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 or whatever, and then commit transaction. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So, and then the last thing that, uh, you know, there's lots of other things that uh, part of Couchbase 7, but the last thing is, you know, I mentioned the begin commit rollback for Nickel. There's been some other enhancements and features added to the query language, which include uh, user-defined functions. So that's uh, something you may be used to from the relational world, creating mm -hmm. a function and, and using it in your queries. So that's in uh, in Nickel now, and Nickel's also added a cost-based optimizer, which that's probably more of a DBA uh, thing. That's that's uh, really important to a DBA that um, the optimization is is uh, is done by you know um, sort of looks looks ahead to see what's the most optimal path to take in this query. You say cost-based in terms of the the resources or the actual money cost? Yeah, yeah, it would be res resources in this case. So the sure. the cost in the computer science sense, not in the uh, accountant sense. Yeah. Uh, so maybe the 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 most efficient and the fastest way to return data. That's, that's right. I should translate that. Um, and I've uh, I see a whole bunch of other features listed here, but I want to oh, talk yeah. about your project. You you've got a project out on GitHub, and uh, it looks like it's uh, M Groves is your GitHub That's right. ID. What? Uh, tell me a little yeah. about that. Yeah. So I mean, looking at all these features in Couchbase Seven, and as the beta was going on, you know, I was uh, sort of dog fooding it and, and using it. And I just joined a, a new team at Couchbase, actually. So I was on the developer advocacy team. Yeah. Thank you. So the last time we uh, spoke, I had uh, just joined the developer advocate team at Couchbase. Now I'm on actually the product marketing management team which very similar to what we do. We still get into technical things and uh, do a lot of technical developer-facing work. Just I'm in the marketing team now, I guess is the difference. 
Uh, but I was talking to my, uh, my new boss, and I said, you know, we've got these great uh, features now that kind of map uh, up to relational concepts, you know, relational database. As I mentioned, a collection is kind of like a table, same level of organization. Uh, you know, a scope is kind of like a schema. And we've got ACID in there now. We've got UDFs, um, user-defined functions. Do we have anything that we can just kind of to help get people started to convert their existing relational database into Couchbase to kind of give them, you know, a foot in the door to see how it, how this maps up to what they're used to? And he said, uh, "That's a great idea. Why don't you go ahead and build it?" <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it so, your mouth. so yeah, I, well, so I I did. It's, it's a lot of fun actually to to build this uh, type of. Um, a type of program. It's an open source project. It's still very experimental. I'm not the only one in the world doing it. There's several others that are, are, are working on similar projects for different mm -hmm. databases. But mine's focused on SQL Server to Couchbase because okay. that's what my background is in, in SQL Server. So that's the one I knew the best. But So I, I, this program, it's, it's a .NET library you can use to um, migrate your data from SQL Server over to Couchbase. It's uh, mm -hmm. It uh, sort of examines, reflects on SQL Server to determine what structures there are and create the corresponding structures in Couchbase, move the data over, uh, creates the, you know, um, kind of creates the approximations of the same indexes that were in SQL Server, creates the users that were in SQL Server, and can actually d do some, uh, um, some rudimentary uh, denormalization. So in a JSON database, you can you can and typically do want to consolidate data from multiple tables mm. into one document, uh, which you're probably familiar with working with Cosmos. So the program will actually do that as well. It'll, it'll take the tables that you specify and combine them into, uh, you know, the one document. So like a shopping cart, for instance, you have a shopping cart table and a shopping cart items table. Mm. Uh, typically, you want to combine that into a shopping cart document that has Makes an sense. array of items in it. So it can do some of that as well. And I see I'm looking at the documentation or the readme file here, and it, it converts the uh, SQL Server schemas into scopes and the SQL right. Server tables into collections. So yep. you're actually taking advantage of features that were just released in Couchbase 7. That's right. That's exactly How does this tool right. work? Is this a command line tool or is there a user interface or what's the... Right. So a UI would be nice to have. Right now, like I said, it's a .NET library. So okay. it's just something you install with NuGet, and then you could write your own console program or whatever. Oh. Uh, I actually do have a console example in the uh, in the repository there uh, mm -hmm. that kind of shows the how you do it with uh, the well-known uh, SQL Server example, AdventureWorks. I'm sure you're familiar with that. Oh yeah. For AdventureWorks is a great sample because it has a kitchen sink of all the SQL Server features and and data types and scopes and, and tables and things. So or not scopes, schemas. And tables and things. So I mm -hmm. thought that was a great example to start with, to right. just show the power of what you can do with uh, with the new features in Couchbase as well. Sure, and it's installed by default if you have SQL Server. That's right. Um, I'll put a link to that in the show notes here. Oh, thank you very much. Um, and are you taking contributions for this? Are you this by all on your own, or you want the community to? I, you know, I've, I haven't gotten any pull requests yet. I do get uh, some issues from time to time, some people asking questions, and mm -hmm. I absolutely welcome that because, uh, you know, if you're, if you're in the same situation where you're wanting to move from relational to, to NoSQL world, you know, any sort of comments where it's like, hey, I, how do you do this? Or, hey, my database is like this. How, how, could, how does that work for your program? Those mm -hmm. are things that I, I think are great. Even if it's just yeah. you asking a question or you having a complaint, that gives me something to think about and work on and enhance the, the program even more. So even if you just want to throw out a, a little message and says, hey, this, this is terrible because X, Y, Z. <laughs> I, I love that kind of feedback. I, I love that. It helps me make the <laughs> Maybe they could phrase better. it a little more politely than that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, you're right. The, the, people work, the developers are out there in the real world solving real problems. And they, exactly. They're encountering edge cases that you might yes. not even consider as you're building this thing. Absolutely. Uh, back in, uh, one of, one of the features in there was uh, was the pipelines and filters. So it's a way you can, you know, as the data is being copied over, you can uh, transform it if you want to redact certain sensitive data, or if you want to just limit it to let's say uh, a year's worth of data. That actually mm -hmm. came out of a, a suggestion from an, an issue. It says, "Hey, I, I really need a way to just limit the data or uh, change the data in progress." And so I came up with filters and pipelines to uh, very cool to add to that project. Yeah. Very cool. 
Uh, Matt, is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have? Um, well, if you'd indulge me, there is a uh, Couchbase event coming up very soon. This oh, is a free, uh, free virtual conference, so it's online. It's called Couchbase Connect Online 2021, and I'm happy to give you a, a link if you want to sign up for that. Totally free uh, registration, and I think it's a two-day conference. This would be in October. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll, I'll be presenting there, of course, but lots of other great uh, speakers um, from Couchbase, uh, from our customer base, from our user base, our partners will all be there uh, talking about you know real world use cases that they've used Couchbase to help solve uh, their problems um, and, and take on some of the modern challenges of, of their application architecture. And so definitely check that out, register, totally free. Uh, lots of uh, great uh, content there. I think there's even some swag giveaways and things like that, so you don't want to miss that. Virtual swag giveaways, I love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, the swag's real, but the, the conference is, uh, is virtual. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Matt, thank you so much for your time. This is, uh, this is really interesting. I'm going to check out this project. And you stay safe. Thank you very much, David. Relational and couch-based technology can be friends. <laughs>